That just happened. Like, literally, literally, every time I've come outside the past few weeks, it's like, you know what? No, we're just, it, you're gonna have a tornado. That kind of sucks, doesn't it? It'll be all right, but it was so sunny, like 15 minutes ago. So, okay, well, guess, oh, that breeze is cold. That's sort of fun. I bet tomorrow's gonna be better weather for doing yard work anyway, so that's fine. Uh, I guess. Thought the storms were supposed to be going north, but apparently that forecast has changed drastically. Hey, you know what though? Like, I'm making some lemonade today because you needed a good pruning anyway. So we'll just go ahead and take care of that while you're down here and I can actually reach you. Actually, actually. Yeah, see, you can go. I don't need you anymore. And um, I'm trying to make this as productive as possible. I don't want to cut off too much because it's just getting ready to flush out with all of its new growth. But I mean, some of the fronds are a little bit nasty from last year. Oh, yeah, hey, what's up, garden friends? How's everybody doing? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. Welcome to my channel. Oh, no, Mr. Freckles. Oh. Oh, oh, that croton's got to be totally squished. I don't know what to do. I don't want to pick this up. It's just going to blow back over. Oh, wait, also, can I pick this up? We'll find out tomorrow. I'm going to try and get this stuff out from underneath it, though. Oh, no. My crody. Didn't see it coming. Poor thing. I know. I'm really glad you guys weren't out here. That could have been really dangerous. This has never blown over before that I can remember. Uh, how do I just pick it back up? I don't. I don't know if I can do it. Safely, that is. I mean, I could do it. Can I do it safely? I don't know. I'm just gonna assume that the Croton's toast. I guess we'll find out here in a moment. I'm just trying to figure out if there's like a... Maybe... I'll just shut up and give it a try. <sighs> okay, no surprise here. Very heavy. She was just watching me, judging me. Hi, Pumpkin. Pumpkin, come over say hi. Okay. Nice to see you too. It doesn't help that the soil's wet in there, but I can't just leave it lay in here and wait for that to dry out. Especially since the high today is only like 75, and it's kind of in my way. Okay, that's better. Back, back the way things are supposed to be. Sort of. We had a casualty. Oh, my poor Croton. I mean, it's not dead, but she's flat. You know what, though? I mean, it still looks up. What's that, Toby? What is that? Yeah, what happened? Just a little wonky. Hmm. Had a ginger get uprooted. I need to plant that in there again, and then a couple of branches here that, I mean, you know, it's worse things could have happened. So now I need to think of a way to make sure that that doesn't happen again. Like, I'm not trying to have a palm tree out here that's gonna hurt my animals or people obviously but like my animals you know things happen not the end of the world by 
any means at all. And like I said, I can work with this. You can make some lemonade here. Come in here. I need a thing of water. There we go. Oops. <laughs> Why did I grab such a tiny little glass? That wasn't very smart, was it? Let that soak. Sharp, clean cut into the water. Water. One more. So I'm giving these a little bit to soak up some water. I'm going to go ahead and take a glazed pot or a plastic pot would work fine. I just want something that's not going to dry out too quickly. I'm filling it up with some potting mix. It has a decent amount of sand in it. It's going to hold on to some moisture. It's organically rich. There we go. Some time has passed now. You don't have to soak these cuttings, but it's just kind of a force of habit with me to make sure I soak cuttings before I propagate them. And really with crotons, they only need four to five leaves max on them. These are pretty big, hefty cuttings. They're going to be where my sprinklers hit them, my misters, my uh, drip emitters. So I'm not as worried about them drying out. So I'll leave them a little bit more full than I normally would otherwise. But generally just like four to five leaves is fine. And you want at least two to three inches of stem down here to make sure that you have enough to poke down into the soil. But if you're doing this indoors, the less leaves, the better. I'd leave two to three leaves, something like that on there. Also, I should have finished that before soaking it. So I'm gonna let them soak a little bit more. Don't want any air pockets in there. Like I said, it's not really necessary. It's just kind of force of habit. And another option with leaf removal is to actually go in and you can cut the leaves in half. And all you're really doing, the only point here is to reduce the amount of transpiration. That's water evaporating from the foliage. So there's still some foliage left here to photosynthesize to provide energy to the plant, but it's not so much that it's going to be really stressful for the plant to keep up with making sure there's moisture inside of this foliage. Is that, you know what I'm saying? So I went ahead and did that just with that one for an example. If you're propagating indoors, there's usually a lot less moisture. It's pretty humid here. This is sort of just the right time of year to be doing something like this actually for me. So I kind of lucked out as far as that's concerned, but indoors, less foliage, better, cover it with plastic. I'll talk about all that in just a second. So now that those have had, oh, that was a horrible noise. Now that these have had a little while to soak, I'm gonna go ahead and taking some rooting hormone, just like so. Really should put it into a different container before dipping, but I'm not, it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. And then these cuts that were made at a 45 degree angle, it's a little bit of a sloppy cut, but that's all right. I'm just gonna stick that in there, shake it off inside a little bit, make sure there's not too much excess because I just don't want to have to clean up the mess. I like to poke a hole and put my cutting down in there, about two to three inches down should be fine. And then lightly pack the soil in around that cutting. I'm making sure that the smaller cuttings that are in here, so you really only need to get the tip of that in there that those will be more on the outside because I don't want them to be smothered and shaded too much by the larger pieces. And then of course, come through, water it in heavily till the water is running out the bottom of the pot. This will help get any air bubbles out, keep things nice and saturated. The soil really shouldn't be allowed to dry out while waiting for these to take root. And that's pretty much it if you're doing this outdoors. I really, I probably should have taken a few more leaves off of this, but it's fine. I'm not too worried about it. I have crotons everywhere but i thought this is an opportunity to talk about propagating them it's also important to not use a pot that's too large because then the water is too far away from the plant the moist soil you want that to be in close contact to the stems if i were doing this indoors then i would go ahead i would definitely take off a lot more foliage and put a translucent to transparent plastic bag around this tie it off at the top and i'd open that every seven to ten days get a little bit more water in there, really just trying to keep the humidity up because as I mentioned before, just trying to avoid too much transpiration and probably give it, I don't know, just filtered light. They don't like bright, intense light, particularly when they're rooting. Well, bright isn't the right word, direct, direct sun. That's gonna scorch the foliage. They don't, they're not looking for that right now. As it is outdoors, I'm gonna be putting this in a spot where it just gets a little bit of filtered morning sun. That's pretty much it. And like I'd mentioned, I'm not really going to let this dry out. It should take root within anywhere from four to six weeks and then it'll be ready to get going. I'm not going to be fertilizing it or anything in the meantime. There is a little bit of Espoma Biotone starter in the soil mix. And I really could have like with this one right here, Probably it was too late by the time I even thought of it, but cut this in half and done two different cuttings from this one. There would have been less foliage on it. I might go through with my snippers and cut some of those leaves off if I notice that they're starting to kind of wilt, look sort of flaccid. That means that it's not getting enough water. Not enough water is making it into the foliage. Oh, my point. 
after four to six weeks, basically once I start to notice new growth, then I will start fertilizing just like I would with any of my other house plants or tropicals, which just means that during their active growing season, I'll be fertilizing them about every other week to even once a week, depending on how much they're growing. Not this one. That probably won't be until next year, but with an all-purpose fertilizer, a liquid, and I will probably add in another slow release because the slow release that's in here is kind of useless right now and it will have worn off by the time this gets going. You can propagate them from leaf cuttings. Just use a very small pot, and that's one that I would definitely make sure has plastic around it because it will dry out very quickly. But it's the same difference. You dip that in the rooting hormone, keep it wet, and give it some time. It'll grow roots. Again, probably still like four weeks, though. It's a much slower way to do the propagation and not as successful. Usually, larger leaves seem to propagate faster. Man, crotons are so pretty. And you can propagate the cuttings and water if you want to. It's helpful to go ahead and make sure that any cuttings that you put in there doesn't like sit on the bottom. So some waters between the cutting and the bottom of the glass. I've seen people put like sponges and things in the top and poke a hole in it to help keep it suspended. That works well. You can use chopsticks set across the top to help hold it up. That would work. Just important to make sure that you dump the water and put fresh water in occasionally. Probably even a couple times a week. There's oxygen in that water. It'll deplete over time. So it's good to make sure that that stays clean. But I think stem cuttings are just way easier. Just get a cutting from some top growth. Remove enough foliage. There's anywhere from two to five leaves at the top if you live someplace really dry or maybe you just prefer the method cut the foliage in half like I showed before I like to give them a soak beforehand but it's I mean a lot of people don't and it works out fine for them dip them in some rooting hormone and pot them up into something that's not going to dry out too terribly fast and still well draining because once this takes off you don't want it just sit, sitting and sopping wet soil all the time and it'll rot watch out for mold and things like that around the bases of the plants particularly if you are doing a bag method and doing this inside also, I should have mentioned you're doing this inside. Someplace warmer is better. I mean, outdoors, that would be better too. And above 75 degrees, they will root faster. And probably below 90. That might be a bit much for them when they don't have any roots to take up water. For the time being, I'm going to go ahead and just leave it. As I had mentioned, there is an awful lot of foliage left on some of these. This might be kind of a cool way to sort of see success rate too. I'll go ahead and leave that one the way it is. This one only has four. Okay, that's enough of that. This wasn't even planned. This was just supposed to be a vlog, but thought I had an opportunity to talk about this, so may as well, right? Here you go. You hang out over here in the shade for a little while. Like, two months. Oh, and I'm sure there are plenty of people who just popped in for the Croton propagation. If that's the case, thanks for hanging out. I'll keep things updated on my social media, which is linked down below. I'm on Instagram far more than anything else. And comment down below with any tips, tricks, anything you may have to add. It's always appreciated. Get a conversation going. Can be helpful to everybody. But now, onward with the vlog. It's time to start setting things up and making them look pretty. Finally. So I'm going to work on this area. I spent a while with my tiny rake in here pulling stuff out, and now I can do it. I'm going to do it. You ready? Here we go. And after. What do we think? Still messy because this is just a rough draft. I just had to scoot things, at least get them off the patio. That's, it has to do with my irrigation system and whatnot. This way, everything will be watered automatically. I'm working on redoing my drip, so there's still some hoses and things laying around, but overall, I really like it. Got the pygmy date palm, potted up over here into a fresh new pot. The dragon's wing begonia, supertunia vista silverberry coming over the front. Some white caladiums, cordolin fruticasa. The one in the back doesn't have a name. The one in the front was labeled harlequin. It has the more light rainbowy colored foliage. There's one on each side. I need to kind of stake this one and bring it forward a little bit. It's been giving me a little bit of trouble in that regard. And then I took the croton that got smashed by the palm tree in the beginning here of the video, you know, right just a few minutes ago. Tossed that over here. Normally I have my Kai Constellation uh, Monster Deliciosa over here. Deliciosa. Getting tongue-tied, sorry. But it's just not quite time of the year yet to move that over to that location. I keep it in very, very, very deep shade until the sun kind of changes its angle in the sky. I talk about all that a little bit more later in the video. Essentially, I'm just saying, I don't want to move it over, the, over there right now because it might scorch the foliage. Not quite enough shade over there yet. And so that's what I'm saying. I have this kind of, I don't know what it is. I think it's an umbrella holder. I got it years ago from Home Goods, and I've had it out here and I put that Monstera in there every year. But it's not time yet. So I thought the Croton would go well there because it goes 
with the Cortolan, the Cortolan, Croton, Cortolan, Begonias, Croton, Begonias, and uh, Cortolan. This leaf, it's been in my way. And did a lot of repotting. I repotted this Dracania, which was in a video, actually. I think the video prior to this one. Repotted a ginger back there that has just been constantly thirsty. And then even though I repotted it, it's still like, eh, I'm throwing a fit. But that'll look better once that recovers from being repotted. It's going to kind of come up. It'll sort of fan out this back area. It's going to add a lot of privacy. The variegation will hopefully reflect these lights at nighttime pull the eye back. The same thing with the variegation in these Talansias, not Talansias, Bromeliads. They have really gorgeous, go wow, that's really pretty. Screenshot, maybe back there, that makes more sense. Yeah, beautiful foliage on these Bromeliads. They have like a whitish sort of powder on their leaves, and that again is going to reflect light and draw the eye back. That was something I wanted to be sure of with the Caladiums, was that I wanted them there because the white is going to light up at nighttime. Same thing with the petunia in the front. Toby, you do not eat succulents. We're not going to start having problems like that now. You're too old for that. You're nine years old. No, 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 no. Just licking the plants. It's very weird. You don't ever do that. Maybe he was just sniffing them. I might be overreacting. I'm not sure. Put your collar on. you naked. That's inappropriate. <laughs> Anyways, the white's going to reflect the light. That's why I want it over here near the lamppost. I think it'll look nice at nighttime, and I'll try and get a nighttime shot and have that at the end of this vlog. Then I have nestled in some bromeliads here. I like tucking bromeliads into the crevices around the rocks. It kind of helps to naturalize the area, which is something that is sort of a theme for me with this whole entire thing, was that I want it to look natural. Not really natural, but naturalized to an extent. You know, I mean, I put my Song of Vendia down here, that doesn't look naturalized, neither does the um, succulent planter, but you know, I didn't want things to be laid out in a perfect order. I didn't want that. I wanted it to be like, hey, there's formal pottery on the patio, which it will look like at another time, and then just like, boom, the jungle happened in this corner. And arranging the plants in a way that there are different layers, so there's things to look at down here and around the corner, there's a coleus that there's depth and layers. There's an Australian tree fern back there. There's a pothos hanging up in the tree. I made sure to put Talansias that have some interest to them within the site behind everything. Behind the caladiums have some red since it goes with the red, the pink, the pink, the red, and then more red. Creating lots and lots of layers. It's also the reason I made sure to put some impatience back here in this planter and down here just to add a little bit more color. Not that things aren't colorful enough, but it's just different with the flowers versus the foliage, you know? And then the white, like I said, will help reflect color at nighttime, reflect light at nighttime, not color, brighten the space up a little bit. I mean, I could explain it for a long time, but it's right in front of you. You see what I did here. Caladiums, parlor palm, the uh, urn plants, the talansias, the tracanias, macho ferns on each side. They have been fine with lots of sun and lots of shade, so they'll work out like that. I am actually going to probably be moving these into hanging baskets here in a few weeks, but they're good right here for now. That croton that's back there, I have other plans for that too. So it's just more of kind of like a place for me to keep things that I need for future projects just off the patio onto their own set of irrigation. It's just, I think, looks much better this way. Much better than just having the plants. I mean, I had them set up on the patio, so it wasn't super messy, but it would be nice to have the patio clean and that's hard to do when there's pots all over the place it's hard to wash the dirt off and whatnot this is a definite improvement i am getting some spanish moss oh i need to change the light bulb but i want to tuck that into the bottom of this lantern and let that come out of there i'll drape it in a few other places it adds nice texture it's very flowy <laughs> is that the right word it adds a nice flow. It's airy, and you can see it move in the wind. It's that lighter silvery green color. It's just, something about it is just pretty. The last few times I've ordered it, I'll talk about that later. So and what I'm saying is, this is more of a rough draft, but I thought it would just be fun to do it now, make that part of the vlog, who's setting things up and getting things off the patio. And I know it probably seems a little bit odd, because it's like, but did you even vlog that? I did. That's like everything that's happening after this clip is me doing this. Which is actually why I'm also tongue-tied, because I already finished, I finished filming the vlog. This is all, you know, to start things off. So, for people who don't like long videos and just want to get to the point, here's the point. The point just happened. But, from this point and on, oh, hold on, no, I need to mention the fountain. The fountain I'm going to do a whole separate video on. I'll be pulling it out and redoing it, 
I don't have all the pieces yet that I need to fully finish that off, so that's why I, like, I haven't really acknowledged it. I got it set up, but it needs to be re redone in a different way. So as I was saying, at this point and on, it's going to be the vlog of me setting everything up and, and just whatever else happened in life the last, like, 24 hours. Hey, Tobes. All right, here we go. Hope everybody's doing well. Let's get to the vlog, daughter. Oh my gosh. This thing had one heavy root ball on it. And man, really underestimated how much soil I was gonna need to fill this pot. Right now, I am dividing up these cordolins, cordolin fruticosas, to make like a nice backdrop to go into these pots. They're gonna kind of hide the windmill palm a little bit, but that's all right. Eventually, there'll be bamboo wrapped. I'll talk about all that later. But um, the windmill palm will be visible from the other side, and maybe some from this side too. My main thing though is, I had it so that there was this red cordolin right here, and then this other one, which I think the name is Harlequin. The tag says Arlequin. I can't find that one on the internet, so I think it was just a typo. Maybe I'm wrong though, I don't know. But I had it, so there was one on, like it was just too much, they need to kind of be blended together. So I went ahead, I pulled them apart, at least this one. Look at how pretty the flowers are on this. Isn't that just beautiful, the flowers, this flower spike? It's been in bloom for a while and I never really took advantage of that. I never got up close and was like, hey, what are the details like on this? But they're so stinking cute and adorable and cheery. I love them. So yeah, that's what's going on here. Now I need to come over here and grab this one out from back here. Pull that trunk over a little bit. Bring it down in here and I'll probably do it. Eh, we'll see in just a second. Oh yeah, that's much better. I've been toying between doing this Caladium here, which doesn't have a name, it's just an assorted Caladium, or a la Caja Fried Egg. And while I like the Fried Egg in here, this is right underneath a light, and I've talked before about white plants and variegated plants reflecting, because white reflects a lot. I think I'd rather have the Caladium over here, because at nighttime that's going to be really luminous and really pretty. Which I could also offset by putting white flowers in this, but this isn't... This isn't really a white flower kind of setup here. And that's all right, don't worry, Frydeck. I have other plans for you. I originally got two of these thinking that I would pop these up with either my foxtail palm or my robolini, but that's all right. I have another idea, but maybe not. We'll see. This side of the planter is going to get just a little bit more sun. So I'm putting this Justicia over here. I don't know its name. I've grown them before. This one just didn't have no label. I think it's called like Margarita, lime cocktail maybe, lime cocktail, something like that. You can see it, it's pretty. I wish I knew the name, but I don't. It will probably, by the end of this growing season, should get, I'd say anywhere from a foot to a foot and a half high. And I'll have all these pretty flowers on them. That's gonna stand out nice. And it's still going to get some sun protection from that cordolin, and then this Robolini is really gonna do a lot of flushing out. I don't, I'm not a huge fan of how their crowns are the same height, but I guess that's just sort of the way it's going to have to be this year. But yeah, I'm liking that. Keeping things colorful, right? What are you doing? Don't eat dirt. It's that Espoma Biotone. They, oh, they love that stuff. And I try and keep them out of it, but uh, they go right for it. It's kind of like if you've ever used um, coffee grounds in your pots for fertilizer. Toby, hey, knock it off. Get out of there. Yeah, don't make me use my daddy voice. I don't like that. I feel weird saying daddy. That was odd. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Could have just said authoritative and it wouldn't have had to have gotten weird. Maybe a Supertunia Vista Silverberry over the front here. That's going to help tie together these guys that you can't see right now, but there's a, one in the middle there. There's also pink dragon's wings in here. Dragon wing begonias. And if I put one of those in here, it will kind of tie this section to that section. Because otherwise it's going to be like, hey, you have this, and then it's just a super abrupt change. I think that I should probably put a begonia in there. Yeah, remember these Clarence begonias from Walmart? Still got one pink one left. Come in here, unclip her from her pot. Or him, or they. I don't need to, you don't need a pronoun. You're a flower. This is a very peaty mix. I'm going to try and loosen it up. Remember, these were on clearance, so not like the most beautiful, most attractive things, but uh, they'll fill out and look pretty good in some time. I'm trying to kind of spread it around a little bit. Okay, that'll work. This is getting full, but it, 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 it needs more. Persian Shield. I love having Persian Shield over here. It has a great, great texture to it. Nice color, good contrast. And I think having this Justicia just in front of that, which is going to stay smaller, that's going to add a great contrast. Not that the 
cordelins behind it aren't going to add a great contrast to. Toby, you keep hugging my feet and I keep tripping over you. Why are you being dangerous? Why are you being dangerous? See, the problem here is that, like I mentioned before, this side of the spot's going to get way more sun than that side. So I can't really balance this as far as symmetry is concerned, which wouldn't be an issue if I hadn't done this with the cordelins in the background. But I think I'm just going to go with it. Now, if I put something else white over here, that'll kind of bring sort of like a circle. And it'll make a little bit more sense. I don't really have anything. I, maybe Bacopa. I don't want to put Bacopa in this. What do I have that's white and can take a lot of sun? A decent amount of sun. Alyssum. I don't want that with the Supertunia Silverberry. I think that's going to look weird. You got thirsty. That storm knocked things around and... When I watered, I was having trouble setting things back up. What about Dusty Miller? It's not white, but it's kind of white. Silver, but that might work. Mm, no, the texture's too off. The whole balance is... Maybe I should pull the Caladium. I really want that Caladium in here, though, because like I said, the light and that reflection... Hmm. I have one more of these Caladiums. You can see, though, it's a little sunburnt. Some caladiums can take more sun than others. Typically, the white ones are not the ones that can take a lot of sun, though. They start to look like that. So, I know it looks better. Proper. The silverberry, it has some red in it to bring colors forward, and the pink, and it's balanced, but it's just, I mean, I just, I don't, is it, I don't think it's me. I'm gonna give it a night to like see how much because I really do like to base a lot of what I do off of how things look at night and from all different angles and everything I think in the evening I'm really going to like this because of the reflection I was just I was so excited to use my Persian shield and my justicia I don't think I can make those work in here oh and I almost put this wandering you in but it's like that that wouldn't work in either <sighs> I only have one of the justicias I have multiples of these Persian Shield, and these, they get kind of tall, so really that wasn't going to work in here, I just, I really wanted it to. But what I can end up doing with the Persian Shield is I think that I can work that into this planter, so I'll do that another time. So you just go ahead and sit back in your, oh, this is in your pot, where's your pot? Okay, there we go, we'll get to you another time. Guys, can I just, like, I could just sneak it in there, like, look at, just from right here, that looks beautiful, doesn't it? When you stand back, it's like, what are you doing there? I don't think I care. I want it in there. I'm going to do it. Forget it. It's fine. Because here's what I'm thinking. I had gotten these caladiums to use in a different planter, a whole different video. So I'm going to have to go to the nursery and get a couple more. Anyways, maybe they'll have another one of these justicias, and I can put it over here. And then everything's going to be fine. If that's what I keep telling myself. Either way, I was hoping to actually not have to go anywhere and grab anything this weekend, but uh, I used a lot of potting soil. This took two giant bags of potting soil. It's a really big pot. Oh no, it's crooked. I had leveled things out, but I guess it settled weird. Oh no. Oh, hey, that's smart. Let's just shoot water right on the outlet. Wait, it's time for me to stop. <laughs> that looks so terrible. It'll perk up by morning. Man, this, that took me so much longer than I was anticipating because I just, I got stuck in my own head. Has that ever happened to you where you, it's like you have the idea of what you want to do. Also, I do have a bamboo pole somewhere that goes around this so that's not just like boom outlet. Um, it's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? To get like really caught up on something when it's sort of an artistic thing. And with something like this, unless you really tear the roots apart, you just pull it out if you don't like it. And keep playing with it. and Which, I mean, I kind of did. But I really just, I put way too much thought into this. I was already set on him, the Cordelins in there. And the Vagonian Supertunia just made sense. I figured I would use those. But it was just, I really, really wanted to get those other plants in. And like I said, maybe they'll have another one of these Justicias at the nursery tomorrow. I don't know. But uh, even if they don't, I'm leaving it. Because I like it there. And so it's fine. It's what I've decided. Executive decision. Who am I arguing with? No one's even here. It's just, you know, sometimes you think about what the comments are going to be, and then you sort of just get defensive for no reason, because it doesn't matter. It's my yard, and I can do what I want to, and I think that most people are accepting of that. It's just, I don't... You know what's going to be neat, though? It will be dark soon, so I should pretty much cut this part off here, but I really need to keep going. Um, 
We'll be able to see the lights reflecting on here. Those petunias, hopefully they'll pop back up pretty soon. Really? Come on. I'm at Lowe's and the tornado sirens are going off. Look at this cute pot I got. Isn't that adorable? It reminds me of a Skittle. I'll probably put like a cactus in it or something. It's the next day. Clearly I'm not concerned about the sirens because there's nuts of nothing on the radar. But I'll check it out just to be safe. Hold on. Yeah, no, it's fine. Oh, there's a sneeze coming. Whew! Um, it's the next day. See, sirens just turned off. It got kind of dark to keep on vlogging, and I ran out of soil. So I was like, I can't really get much more done anyways. So here we are at Lowe's getting soil. Thing is, you know, we've been here so much. I doubt there's much to see that, like, haven't already seen. Oh, they're getting stuff in all the time, though. Yeah, like the ornamental oregano. I have been indifferent to it, but the more and more I see it, the more it's starting to grow on me. Oh, look at these. Teeny genie compact lantana. There's nothing on this tag about this other than, like, care, which is nice, but how big do you get? Anything? Something? Nothing? And there's a description, which is nice, but it'd be nice if it was a little bit more detailed than that. Oh. <laughs> Last one, still got one left. That's surprising, I kind of thought those would sell out like pretty much instantly. Um, what are y'all doing, just out for a stroll? Oh, yellow tag, clearance, $10, don't need it. Why? I actually found a card that never happens. Well, it does just not very often. Yeah, you know, the plants are just, I don't, I don't know. I always check out the clearance. What's going up here with these Jennies? Mm. Oh, no, no, that's way too much. Yeah, not for that. Maybe a quarter. Maybe these. Who's tall enough to see? I need a tall person. I mean, I'm 5'11", you'd think that'd be tall enough. What's going on over here? That's, no. Yeah, it's the same thing that it always is. Not seeing anything different. Oh no, what happened? I think we know what happened. Been a lot of storms around here. Look at the rainbow! Isn't it beautiful? You threw me off. Don't you see I'm recording? Why is there a stop sign there? What's going on out here? Oh, the lights are out. I guess so. This isn't, this has nothing to do with anything, but it felt like everybody should see the rainbow because it keeps going and it's glorious. I'm home, I've already gone through two of the bags of potting soil. Been planting things up like crazy over here. Everything I've planted up, potted up so far, will have its own video, so that's why it's not here in the vlog. The ginger, man, this thing, I've had so much trouble keeping this plant hydrated, so bumping it up should definitely help. I mean, just look at it. It's not even, I mean, it's sunny. It's not that hot, it's gonna get hot pretty soon though, so I need to move it. Actually, everyone's very thirsty. These caladiums shouldn't be in the sun either. There's just, everything's chaos right now. I've been shuffling, shuffling things around to do the repots. I just repotted this dracania here, as well as, where's my other one? Oh, here she's hiding in the shade. It's got kind of sunny here a few minutes ago. The um, Song of India dracania, dracania reflexa. They don't, you know, they don't like the sun. There's a whole video that's already been out about this. Probably the video prior to this one, because I just did that and filmed it. I still need to do this tree fern here, which I don't think I'm going to get around to doing today. Probably not, but I need to finish this area up. So the things I wanted to move over are this larger dracania. I want something taller back here by the fountain. Would you stop being in the way? Right over here. I think that would look good there. The caladium, I don't know if that works there or not. And thyrum uh, that got kind of sunburnt where I had it before, but it's recovering. And it was here last year, did fantastic. It's still got flowers on it. And this one down here, that needs a repot too, but I want to do that in a video and I don't have time to do that right now. So that can chill. Bromeliad up there, macho fern. These guys can take so much sun. I know I need to bring back Fern Friday. I'm waiting to build up more ferns because I mean, I don't, it's 52 weeks in a year, right? I don't have 52 ferns and I don't want 52 different ferns. Some of them, very high maintenance, but the macho ferns, 
so easy. I have one over here in this corner. Like I said, I think I'm going to put that Dracania right here. It'll have a little bit of height, and then I'll probably tuck. That's an electrical outlet. I put a pot over it. And up, up. Anyways, the ginger probably maybe up here, because I just kind of want to fill in this area. I don't like seeing through there, through the fence. It bugs me. So the ginger will kind of come up and fill that in. Over here in this like log thing right there, that's where the Thai constellation goes. My monstera, who is really just living its best life, so happy to be outside. It's opening up new foliage like crazy. Mine doesn't have like crazy impressive variegation, but I still love it. I still think she's real pretty. Not worth what you know people are charging for these things, but still that's where I always put this. But the sun's still kind of direct this time of year very straight up in the sky which if there were clouds that would look better but it's just blue but here in just a couple weeks the sun's going to be instead of like right above everything it's going to be over a little bit more like this coming through at an angle as summer comes in and that's when that area is going to get more shaded look at look at what i've done over here and so yeah that's when i'll go ahead and pop that in there in just like a couple weeks i think it's still too sunny it gets a lot of morning sun particularly like right up high, right underneath those palm trees. Down below, that's what I was going to talk about with the Dracania, with this Reflexa right here. They don't like direct light. The Plumeli, I don't know how to pronounce it, but the more regular variety that doesn't have the white variegation like the Song of India does, they can take a little bit more light, but they just really don't like direct light. I mean, here's what happened to it when I brought it out this year, and it wasn't getting that much sun. So... Uh, I'm thinking it will probably do okay right here in this corner as long as the sun's not on it for more than like maybe an hour in the morning. And I, I, I think that's about where the sun's at right here. Right now, that's what I mean. And with those up there, I'll give that a good soaking and it'll pop back out just fine. I didn't want to overwater it because I had to come through and lift the whole thing up there onto the wall. Thinking this other caladium that is over here... I may go ahead, let me see. Basically, I'm filling in all the gaps, and I think that this will do well right there. Oh, oh, I like that. It is backwards, though. I want all of that facing this way. If they're like this, I want them like this. There we go. Yes, that's much better. I'm, I like to kind of naturalize the area. I know that sounds kind of odd, but I like for it to look sort of like there's just a little chunk over here where just tropical things started to happen. I mean, that's what's going on. I think you know what I mean. Okay, and I have to remember that I need to work my way from the back to the front, because once I have something here, I won't be able to keep going. Yeah, get that fallen tag out of there, too. So, more little guys. I'm thinking another bromeliad. Now, oh, these guys really need to be staked up. I'm going to see if I have anything I can do that with. Nope, I do not. Just going to have to go with it. Gosh, look at these are just... They're the prettiest, aren't they? This particular bromeliad, the urn ones, the urn plant. I just, the colors, they make me so happy. And I'm thinking, might tuck it in there. Oh yeah, that looks good. I want to pull that foliage out of the water though. You, 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 you're pretty. Look at, oh, it's pretty. I'm also simultaneously working on this area right here as well as down here. All these guys, the ones that are in their little quarantine section that I've been spraying and treating for, the mealybugs. This aglonemia has been getting too much sun, but I think that that helped take care of some of the pests that were on there. Same thing with the Alakaja variegata. It's a uh, Okinawa silver. But I say it's time to go ahead and start taking some of these guys and moving them to where they would actually be happy now that they appear to be bug-free. I'm still going to keep treating them, though, just to be safe. Tucking the aglo over there. These cordolins here. These were some of the ones. There's another one over there. That's why I'm saying these. That I got on clearance from Lowe's. And they still look like clearance plants. But um, I'd say they're ready to be moved too. I'll grab this one too. I can do this. I cannot believe how many ants nests are over here. I've been... They're on my legs. They're on my arms. They're driving me crazy. Can and do this Schefflera here. Nice foliage. Oh, so many ants. Okay, Dracanias. By the way, this is a rough draft. I'm just moving things back now that the irrigation's kind of running. There's an owl head that's the scrap of the grackles. Didn't work. That's a, I guess I hadn't explained that. One of the reasons, one of the multiple reasons I haven't done a lot of planting in the ground yet is because my irrigation system's broken. They put a dye in the water and they're still trying to find the leak. 
but they did turn it on again so at least I can use it just not really on the set timer but that's still better than having to hand water all these plants so that's what's going on there uh, I'm okay with that there's a vine in here I need to cut out this sweet lace or sweet silver it's a lace vine but the there's a nest in there a cardinal's nest and I don't want to disturb them until their babies are gone so I'm just leaving it alone. I really am trying my best to like not even disturb much while I'm doing this, which is why I'm just kind of tossing the stuff in there for right now. And I have two more of these Dracanias, which was a nice surprise because I thought I only had three, but I guess, you know what happened? I bought one at regular price and then like a few weeks later they went on clearance for like a buck fifty or three bucks and I bought three more. I think that's what happened. The Chef Lara, I don't really like it here. That's not working for me. So, pop the other Dracania over there. Yeah, I like that better. This one still has a lot more recovering to do than the others do, but I like the three. That looks a lot better. I'm thinking I should probably maybe cut off some of the dying foliage on this Eglanemia too. And then the banana. I just need to get this one off the pavement. This one is going to get planted out into the landscape. That's like a perfect fit. I need to get those pots back there too. There's nowhere near enough sun to keep that growing right here, at least not for a very long time. Sorry, something bit me. But like I said, I'm just trying to get the stuff off the patio to where the irrigation will hit them to buy me more time, basically. And I do think those reds and things, they go nice together, but really, I don't, I shouldn't be putting too much thought into this. Mostly just need to keep things sorted by light requirement, which means that shouldn't be there, but it's fine. Just, just for like a week or two. Because I really... I don't want to be digging in the ground until they've sorted out what's going on with the irrigation because they may have to go in and like rip everything up to get to where the leak is. So that's why it's just pots going into their places. Bromeliad right there. Well, you need to stand up though. That's not going to work, sweetie. That's fine. Tuck the bird's nest fern in right there. That's pretty. It's fine. Okay. Final Dracania. Back here in the shade. Well, mostly shade. Get some sun in part of the day. Pack of stackies here. The Ludia. Would you let go, please? I'm gonna put that under the Alexander palm. Or really, my plan is to try my best to get it potted in here with the Alexander palm, but uh, might be challenging. There's a lot of roots in there, and that pot's kind of big for that. I have another Clarence Dracania here that poor thing was just cooking. I just repotted it. A little while ago so I was like you just hold still for a few minutes I'll move you but apparently that was too long for it look at what happened in just a few minutes poor baby so I'm taking a bit of a forced break look at how much look how deep the water is in the pool that's a little bit lower than it was when I came out here just a moment ago I'm draining it because it was almost up on the patio it's supposed to shut off on its own when the water gets that high but it's well it didn't so there's that update. Had to take a quick break, stand next to the fan chair. It's hot out here. So I got this lantern thing. It was in a vlog a while ago. It has a candle that goes in it, which is right here. But the candle color is like cool white. It's not candle. Oh, wait, maybe it changes colors. Is it changing colors? That would be more acceptable to me than it being like a bluish white because no colors are like a bluish white. I don't see... It's not changing colors. Well, that's dumb. Why would they? This is one of those Alan Roth things from Lowe's. Sits down inside of here, like so, and then up in the tree. I mean, it's cool looking, but why would the candle be a dumb color? That doesn't make any sense. I'm thinking it's one of those auto on and off things, so I'll have to remember to come out and turn this on when I would want it to. Right? I think so. I don't know. It's also like actually coated in wax on the outside, which makes it seem more real. I'll give it that, but heat, hot. This is for outdoors. I don't know. Seems kind of silly to me, but shouldn't judge it until I can see it at nighttime, I guess. I also kind of started doing some other things. I've got the uh, bromeliads up here, so it goes bromeliad, caladium, bromeliad, caladium, bromeliad. But I might move this caladium. It looks a little bit squeezed in there. And that might look good to put it right back behind that ginger. Who's still so thirsty. And then I popped my tree fern into this pot that... The, it's not a pot. I think it's an umbrella holder. But the one I talked about where I usually put my Monstera Deliciosa, the Thai Constellation. 
So it's like that would work. It adds some texture, but it just looks off. So I think I'm going to move that to the background. I want layers in here. I want it, like I said, to look like it's like, whoa, what happened? Just like plants after having like a few clean things on the pet. It'll make sense someday when I get it done. This is just a rough draft, but I thought it'd be fun to do this with every. Why am I saying that now in the video? This is like 20 minutes in probably. Eh, okay, I guess that works. I also hung up my neon pothos back there. I prefer to put my marble queen right there, but she's still recovering from being moved outside. Little bit of sun scorch, not a lot, just a little. But it's more sunny right here than over here. It's where they're doing their thing. And so I was thinking for this, whatever you want to call this, like hollow trunk thing, Croton, because Croton, Cordolin, Cordolins, Croton, just for now. I usually like to get my Crotons more sun than that, but y'all saw what just happened to this poor thing at the beginning of the video. So that might be a good spot for it for a few weeks. Give it a little bit less light. Hopefully it'll recover some. I mean, it should be okay. It's just kind of squished. Now that works. The pot is a little bit too large for it, but I feel like it's not that noticeable. So that'll be okay for right now. Also, I keep pulling this planter back and filling in from the bottom and it keeps going that way. What's that about? And then I have the macho fern here and then one over here. The problem I'm having is I would really like to have my Pacistacus lutea over here. So I'm going to have to put that macho fern somewhere else. Maybe I'll just toss it right there. These are going to go into hanging baskets, actually. In not too long, a couple of weeks, I'll get around to doing that. Yeah, that works fine. It kind of comes over the silverberry here, the super tunia, but maybe uh, I feel like I need to actually, like, rotate this pot now. Ugh. That was really easy. I don't know why I thought that was going to be a problem. I just, like, took my hand and... No big deal. So, uh, Pacistacus lutea. That's this plant right here. And, oh, my soil's all wet. I'm just going to pot it up in this little mini pot. Isn't that cute? It matches the those over there. But the soil's all wet. Oh my gosh, it's so hot. I just realized that probably looks way weirder than I intended it to. Wait, hold on. What did I just do? Oh, I was repotting. I was going to make new soil. Okay, so here's that Pacistacus, the Lutea. Problem. I just remembered I also have this Heliconia over here, which would look really good over there also. It has the nice, bold foliage, which somewhat mimics a bird of paradise, why it's called a false bird of paradise. And then this one, I cannot pronounce the name of this variety, but it's a Cytericorum Cosiana, Chosiana, I don't know how to say it. But they have orange flowers, which works with what I'm doing out here. And I put this Justicia here, I'm sure y'all remember me throwing my little fit about wanting to have that in this planter. The Justicia flower is very similar to the Pacistachys. Like, extremely different colors, but same sho shope. <laughs> same shape and everything. And these bromeliads aren't staying here. They're getting worked in over there. So I was thinking, maybe, what if I were to put that Justicia I was just talking about right here in the center of this planter? I think that might work. I don't know if the sun's going to be too strong for it, though. If it is, I can just move it. That's no big deal. Question is, can I even dig a hole? This is the, I think I talked about when I did this before. This is all roots. So I can't really plant anything big in the center of this pot. And yes, I do own a hand trowel. It's just oftentimes it's a little bit easier just to get in with your fingers when you got to work around the roots of something. Yeah, I think I might be able to work out a cavity in here to make that work. But look, this big root is right in the center where I would want it to be. I really, though, as you all know, I'm really into having this plant in there, though. Even though it doesn't really fix, it's going to get a little bit taller than the caladiums. I like it with the pink of the begonia and then the colors of the silverberry. It, something about it, just, I like it. But, oh wait, hold on. Yeah, pink begonia, silverberry. I'm going to get the same effect over here. It's fine. This is fun for you, just listening to my thought process. I hope so. Someone left a comment not too terribly long ago saying that they feel like I probably talk to myself a lot, which is funny because I didn't used to, but since I've been vlogging over the past year, yeah, kind of do. But not, I mean, the same as most people. It's mostly in my head, not 
out loud. I don't just like walk around having conversations with myself. Although I suppose that that's slightly technically what's happening right now, but not really because I wouldn't be talking like this if it weren't for y'all. So there's that. Can I get this deep enough for this plant? Yeah, just barely. Luckily this thing was in a tiny pot and didn't have a lot of roots on it, so not a big deal there that seems to be working. I don't want the soil mounded up though, it's just gonna wash away. This pot, when I planted this Adenidia up last winter, or not winter, last summer, it, I should have planted a little bit deeper. I've been planting my pots deeper this year than most years because I like to be able to soak them heavily. I like to be able to run the water in, let it kind of fill and drain and fill and drain. With this one, it's up kind of high, but I do remember that this was like the best I could do as far as fitting it in here. But when I water this heavily, the water goes out the sides, which isn't, this is going on drip. I have a drip line run behind everything, so that's not that big of a deal. But until the drip is up and running, I have to water by hand. You are getting kind of spindly. Is it because I had that bromeliad around you? I think I may have done a little bit of damage there. Should bounce back now that I've pulled that out of there, but... Yeah, it'll be pretty. Things take time to grow, that's all. You know how plants work. These guys. And no, I haven't forgotten about this, it's just I need, I need more time to sit on that one. I still need to get through here. I have all my um, drip pulled up. It's normally buried and hidden but I'm thinking I might kind of be redoing it this year. So I wanted to get it up and out in the open where I can see it. But right here, I think that's where the bromeliads are gonna go. You just grab one of these lava st Yeah, that's gonna happen with one hand. Making some cavities to stick some plants in. You know, I guess if that lava stone's there, maybe it doesn't matter if I'm using the cute blue pot that matches these other ones. I'll go ahead and stick these in these nooks and crannies over here. And that'll kind of help, actually, I think, yellow in the middle. Do the red. Let's do that one kind of up there like so. And then the pink. I could put it down here like that. I don't like that. It's a little bit too hidden. I'd almost like it up there, but that's not going to work. Hmm. And when... It, these being three different colors, I kind of want them close together. If they're spread apart too much, I feel like that's going to look odd. <laughs> the problem with the Neogorillias, if that's, I don't know if I'm saying that right, they're so wide you can't put them very close together or else, you know, this happens. That's not going to work. Yeah, I do actually like it just fine like that. But like I said, with them being three different colors, though, it's a little weird. And I also have these guys right here, which I think are Vrissias. That works, I like it. This pink one was already growing at an angle, and the, these, to me, lend themselves to being more on the ground, and I don't want it to look too intentional. So I'm good with that, I like that. This is the part with everything when I'm doing things out in the garden that I get really into, which is the fine details. The big stuff is fun. Oh, lightning bug, where are you going? Come back, friend. Question, where you live, do you call them lightning bugs or do you call them fireflies? It's pretty mixed around. Okay, bye. It's apparently a very camera shy lightning bug. Something got on my arm and it burns and itches. I think it's actually the tree ferns. Those things, they really irritate my skin. I will be incorporating some Spanish moss into this. Particularly, I want that coming out of the bottom of the lanterns, the Spanish moss. I think that'll look pretty. Gonna hold off on that for a minute because I don't have it, I haven't ordered it. Last year when I ordered a big box of Spanish moss, it came loaded with spiders and I was not happy about it. I'm wondering, I still, I have to make up my mind about that one, don't I? All right, I'm not allowed to do anything else until I figure that out. You know, I spent so much time talking and I left fan chair on. I'm sorry, that was probably really annoying. I popped a coleus in here, extra detail, and I love it, looks good. I'm thinking. Some finishing touches. This needs color, so flowers. Color, it's very colorful, you know what I mean. Uh, New Guinea impatience or just regular impatience? I'm not sure it's, it's gonna be enough sun back there for New Guineas. You know, I'm thinking with the New Guinea impatience, I wanna pot them up into something where I can move them if they're not looking great where they are. I don't wanna like plant them inside of something. Does that make sense? 
Okay, so I'm going to dip into the impatience that I actually got for my front yard, which is fine. There's enough to spare since I won't be planting underneath my Japanese maple, since I don't have a Japanese maple anymore. Do some white ones in there. A couple of these cute little pink ones. No, you don't have flowers on you. I don't want to plant you right now. Yeah, that's cute. I don't hate that. These, in person, are like a beautiful pinkish orange coral. They're so red on camera. Yeah, I think that's going to look nice. Maybe I should snip that one in the back down a little bit. Those will fill out. Put a nice pop of color in. I toss an orange one in down here because, you know, the pink and orange and purples and greens kind of what I'm enjoying this year. You guys want to see something kind of gross? Look at that. Little cluster of stink bugs. This was on that Song of India I repotted the other day, and these are going in the trash. I already sprayed them down with some neem, so hopefully it won't be like a long, miserable death to them. I would never want that right here. Do you just like so? I'm thinking. Huh? Yeah. That's cute. I like that. Oh, but it's all like wonky. Hmm. There we go. Straighten that out a little bit. Like I said, the hoses and everything, like I said, rough draft. That'll all be tidied when I finish this up here in a, probably a couple weeks. I'm. It's a long story. There we go. Need the seashell. Perfect. Yeah, I'll take her with it a little bit more. And then the last thing I was thinking about working into everything is this sweet potato vine. It's called Sweet Georgia Bullfrog. You can see right there, it says it grows best in full sun. Now, sweet potato vines can normally go shade to sun, but there are exceptions. There are some that prefer more shade and some that prefer more sun. If the tag says full sun, I feel like I should listen to it, although it's been in full sun and it got a little crispy. But this over here is far from full sun. I mean, I got this with the intention of putting it over here. I just didn't pay attention to that. But wouldn't that look so cool, that color and texture? I mean, it'd be pretty nice. I'll listen to the tag. It says full sun, so I won't put it over here, even though that's why I got you. That's my fault for not paying attention when I picked it up. Anyways. What you doing, butt? Pumpkin? You think you were going to come over here? Say hi, Pumpkin. You make people happy. Just from being cute. Just because you're cute. Just because you're cute. Toby, Toby, you going to knock me. You have to be careful. Oh, boy. What are you doing? What are you doing, Toby? What are you doing? What are you doing? That's not safe. Yeah, that's not safe. Okay. Back to work. Well, I'm excited for things to fill in and fill out. And things will be coming in and out of here. I do this every year over here and in a couple other spots in the garden where I kind of stage up the plants, but oftentimes a lot of the plants are plants that I'm going to be using for other projects. It's just a nicer way to display them. So it, it'll probably be changing throughout the year, which is fine. I like that. Won't be changing drastically though. The objective, once I'm fully done out here and have everything all cleaned up, this is where I've been filming some stuff. So there's some soil and whatnot, some hanging baskets I need to handle, but it'll be like, hey, look, nice clean patio. It'll happen, don't worry, it's gonna happen. Look, we got some pots over here. Oh, it's so pretty. And then also it's like, whoa, what happened? <laughs> it's the opposite thing I think a lot of people want in their garden, but I like to just have really dramatic things sort of tucked away and I want them to appear somewhat naturalized, which is, I'd say pretty good here. The flower on that bromelia has been driving me crazy, but it just doesn't wanna come this way. And that's all right too. The other thing that I haven't like fully finished this area up is because I want to do a video on this, but I'm not ready to do that video because I need cinder blocks. And that's a plant stand that's just temporary because I wanted to get the fountain going and keep the water cool for the dogs to drink out of. But I can't find cinder blocks. I think I need to go to like a masonry type place, but Lowe's and Home Depot doesn't seem to sell them. So I'll have to pull all this out anyways when it's time to do that, which will be a couple weeks. And I will try and remember to insert here some nighttime footage of everything. I'll bring out my nicer camera that records things well in low light conditions. I normally have a light that goes into the fountain, but the squirrels chewed through the cords. So I have to order a new one of those. But just because the nighttime in the garden is one of my favorite times. And I'm hoping it won't be as noticeable just yet, but 
some of the lighter colors like on the sides of the bromeliads they have that lighter sort of dusty color to them that should reflect some light very nicely as well as the they're not big yet but the white on the impatience then like on the caladiums like i talked about an awful lot earlier in the video just have that reflection i think it's going to look really nice i guess we'll see right now i don't know yet because i'm doing a voiceover before i've even done that part of the video i am going to keep the heliconia there i have other plans for that pack of stackies i want to plant the pack of stackies up in its own pot and put it somewhere else but i also i'm not sure that the pack of stackies would get quite the right sun here they stretch very easily the heliconias depending on the variety they can go with like part sun part shade it, it depends on some full sun some full shade just depends this one right here usually does fine in full sun but it shouldn't stretch or anything and then the last thing i need to do over here that's obviously not gonna be in this video is i need to do a bamboo liner around this because that looks terrible i used to have like reed grass there's still some back there around it but after a few years it falls apart so that'll happen eventually i have to like find it and order it and stuff first and that's it i might need to move this woo wait and see i was gonna put it up here on the wall but there's a lot of water that goes up there from watering those orchids so i think this is a good spot for it maybe hopefully oh this is gonna drive me crazy i can't do anything about those right now though it's kind of a bigger project redoing my drip system redoing the drip system is kind of a big project why did i say that's so weird overall i really like how it came out there's still Little details and things to work out, but I'm not going to bother with that since, like I said, this is a rough draft and it's more a place for me to keep and pull plants as I use them for other things. But there are other things I do want to keep over here, like the bromeliads. I want to keep the ginger up there for sure, but the little, like the croton and the kale lily, the anthyrum, this drixania is back there. Those are things that I have other plans for, but this is just a good place to keep them for now. At least better than just sitting on the patio. And that's largely because I have my drip set up in there. So everything in here can get watered automatically on a timer. I don't have to mess with it. That's the beautiful thing. Okay, I don't understand this thing on my wrist that was itching and burning earlier. It stopped. And all of a sudden it just started again. What's going on there? What is this? What is this rash? Any doctors out there? Let me know. I'm not telling you anything about it. Just roll the dice. Give me your best guess. That's the kind of medical care I like. Just kidding, it's fine, it'll grow away, no big deal. Toby, what you think, Tobes? Where's your collar, Toby? Where's your collar, Toby? Why are you naked? I don't understand, Where did... how do you do that? It's because your head is so much smaller than your neck, it's so hard to keep that collar on you. It's actually not that hard. But, sometimes when he goes swimming, he rubs around on things and it pops off. He doesn't run away anyway, so I don't worry about it that much, but I would prefer for him to have it on, obviously. I think I have talked so much that I ran out of words. All the words are gone. <laughs> Not really. There's always plenty of words. I'm very happy with it. I like how it came out. It took a little longer than I wanted to because I repotted a lot of things as I was going. That's good. This was the time to do it. But it's nice to get things kind of moved and put together with themselves. I'm anxious for this planter over here on the right to fill out, particularly that petunia, the supertunia silverberry. I would like to see it look prettier. It looks pretty blech right now, but that'll, that happens sometimes with the annuals. So it'll bounce back, no big deal. There are neighbors eating dinner up on their decks. I'm trying to be like kind of quiet if anyone's wondering what's going on there. I just, I don't want to be like a weirdo out here screaming to myself on my patio. Listen, me and this leaf have been through some things today. This has really been in my way. I keep, you know, you've seen it. I'm constantly walking through there, and it's just, I have been tempted to cut you, but I'm not going to. You can stay for now. Then everything I have left out here, including that pack of stackies that is over there, will be handled in next weekend's video. For the most part, what's left are things that I'm going to be using in my front yard, or for staging up around the palm tree, other things. Next week's vlog, I'm gonna do the in-ground work, at least in my front yard back here. The irrigation people said they were going to come uh, two days in a row now, and they haven't. They came out initially and put dye in the system, but they need to come back, and they need to come back now because I have things I need to plant, and I'm getting impatient. It would be nice, seeing as how it's June, you know, to be able to start gardening and putting things in the ground. 
I just don't want to run the risk of doing that and them having to dig up everything I put on the ground if the line that needs to be repaired is somewhere in that area. So, trying to be patient, but I, it's wearing thin. So I do think I'm going to go ahead and at least start on the annuals in my front yard. The hanging baskets and front porch planters I just did, so hopefully that video will be out sometime soon. And otherwise, that's it. It's like just a few things left to move around. I have all my... This is like, I keep the potting supplies here, mix it up here, repot here. It's like a whole, it's been a, a little bit of a system going on here. And it's working great, but I need to gather the recycling and this is all going to be nice and tidy. Oh, I'm so excited for next week. Well, next week for you guys, it's going to be like tomorrow for me. Because Saturday, doing this, and Sunday, we'll do all that. That's the plan anyways. I would keep doing it all in one vlog, but... Well, you'll find out at the end of next week's vlog why I can't do that. I have something going... Well, it's not a big deal. I just... I only am going to be around, like, one day next week to film videos. And, um, I don't think I'm going to be able to film videos on that day. Because I'm going to want to, like, do other things on the only day that I'm going to be around the house. You know what I mean? So that's why I pre-filmed some things and I wanted to make sure that I'm just doing my vlogging this weekend. And, uh... That's normal. Most people do their yard work on the weekend. I just did it on video and I'm spreading it out a couple weeks so that otherwise there won't be a vlog next weekend. And I don't think that would be great. I like to put those out and talk with everybody. Y'all are so fun to talk to and have such good ideas and good suggestions and you're funny, you make me laugh. The Dracania, I like it in there. I also like, it's bugging me a little bit. So there's probably still gonna be, like I said, some tweaking and whatnot, but rough draft. I hope everybody's doing well. Don't forget to leave the video a thumbs up. It makes a big difference for the videos and for the channels, and I do appreciate it, so thank you. And don't forget to subscribe. I upload multiple times a week, so hit that notification bell. That way you know when new videos come out. I have all my social media linked down below in the description. Follow me, and I will follow you back. I'm on Instagram way more than anything else. Did you hear how my voice went... <laughs> so I stood up and been doing a lot of squat type things today a little sore and comment down below and say hi i love talking to everybody and hearing from everybody like i just said before y'all so fun <laughs> and as always and of course most importantly everybody keep on growing Bye.